La Nina has developed, and it is going to have some dramatic consequences on the Australian summer and storm outlook. We're expecting an increased number of tropical cyclones, an increased severity in thunderstorms, as Queensland is well aware of, and an increased amount of rainfall, particularly across our north and our northeast. days ago, the Bureau of Meteorology declared an official La Nina, which is the first that we've had in over a year since September of 2024. And if you think back to last wet season with record-breaking rainfall in Queensland, La Nina most certainly is one of our most prominent rainfall drivers, particularly for our eastern states. This year is going to be no different, and the La Nina that's just developed, whilst it's going to be a short-lived and relatively weak one, because of the extreme sea surface temperatures into the Coral Sea, it is going to have some dramatic consequences for Queensland especially, but also for the Northern Territory, Western Australia, New South Wales and other places around Australia, particularly on the rainfall side of things. In this update, I'm going to explain what a La Nina is, what it means for your location, how many cyclones are going to come through and what the impacts are right now from this La Nina as it continues to strengthen. So let's just jump straight into it right now. If you are already to my channel, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and give it a hype as well. Now, before we go any further, we have to discuss what a La Nina actually is. And it's pretty simple to understand. It's where cool water over in the equatorial Pacific Ocean stretches out further towards the west than usual, and that is because of those strong trade winds that blow on the equator from east to west. This piles warm water into the Western Pacific Ocean, including parts of the Coral Sea around Indonesia and then into the Philippine Sea as well, and those warmer waters increase the amount of thunderstorm activity that we can see across Australia because warmer ocean waters means more atmospheric moisture can be held, and that results almost always into more rainfall, more thunderstorms, and stronger tropical cyclones. The equatorial thermos line, which is the uh, depth of warm water that goes uh, down into the ocean, it dips very, very far down. We can see warm water as warm as 26 degrees Celsius, as far down as 200 meters of depth into the tropical Pacific Ocean. And that means we've got a lot more energy for tropical cyclones and tropical rainfall events into the Pacific Ocean than normal when we are in a La Nina phase. It's pretty simple to understand. When those trade winds blow harder from east to west, we get those warmer waters into the Pacific Ocean here, and that spikes rainfall accumulations, evaporation, tropical cyclone intensity, and severe thunderstorm intensity across eastern Australia especially, but also by extension into northern and southern Australia as well. This is what we have right now. Blue indicates cooler than average sea temperatures. Red indicates warmer than average sea temperatures. And you can see the equatorial Pacific is dominated by those blues. That La Nina in full swing right now. This is very cool indeed. There's quite a strong La Nina that has developed just in the last couple of weeks. Our sea temperatures have taken a massive turn south, and that indicates we are in a strengthening La Nina phase. This one is continuing to build up. And you can see all of that warm water being pushed close towards the Australian mainland here, in particularly the Coral Sea, which is on average between two to three degrees Celsius above average, compared to the equatorial Pacific, which is about negative 1.2 degrees Celsius below average. Now, keep in mind the thresholds for La Nina is negative 0.8. We're quite far beyond the thresholds for an official La Nina. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology likes to see 90 days of these negative 0.8 degree temperature anomalies to classify La Nina. They didn't wait for that this year, and I think that that's a wise call to make, considering the fact that this La Nina is going to be quite a short-lived one. Uh, they didn't need to waste any time waiting for these numbers to be met here on the 90-day side of things. We're well and truly in the La Nina now, and every other meteorology organization around the world also agrees that we are in a La Nina. And this is spelling warm waters across the Australian coastline, particularly for Queensland. If we actually have a look at our sea temperature maps right now and our La Nina graph, this is our relative linear 3.4 index, which is kind of a graph of the last two years, back to July 2021, four years, pardon, can't believe how long it's been, uh, showing those sea temperature anomalies in the Nino 3.4 index, which if we just cross-reference back to our map here, the Nino 3.4 index is roughly in this box here, give or take a few hundred thousand square kilometers. So this is a kind of a, a moving average of those sea temperatures that, in, that are in those boxes. That's what this graph shows here. And you can see whilst we had that big El Nino event back in the uh, later 2023, it's since cooled down and we've been in a cool neutral or La Nina ever since, basically early 2024. The last time we were in La Nina was from about August or September last year, and that lasted until about January of this year when we went back in towards a cool neutral, which is like La Nina's little sister. It's where we've got those almost La Nina conditions, but not quite. It's not cool enough in the Pacific, and when we've got that cool neutral, we get kind of half the impacts of La Nina. And then over the past uh, couple of months, since July, those sea temperatures have continued to cool into the equatorial Pacific region, and we're now well and truly in full-blown La Nina conditions, with that index about minus 1 to minus 1.2 degrees Celsius below average. 
average in the Nino 3.4 index, and things are expected to continue to cool over the next couple of weeks as well. Now, this is a new map that I found. It's a very colorful one, that's for sure, but this is a probability of sea surface temperature anomalies being greater than 0 0.6 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. And when we've got those hot pink and red colors, it's going to be warm. That means that those there's a high probability of those sea temperatures exceeding 0 0.6 degrees above the long-term average. Now, that might not sound like a big number from the long-term average. I mean, you can barely feel a one degree temperature difference in the atmosphere. So what does a 0 0.6 degree temperature difference mean? When we're talking about anomalies, though, that's a massive jump on the long-term average. And just this alone can hold twice as much moisture into the atmosphere. So this is a big deal. With the Coral Sea expected to, through the months, months of December, January, and in towards February and March, have a lot more heat in it than usual, we're going to be seeing that rainfall really spike up into the Coral Sea. Now, that doesn't always translate to more rainfall for Queensland, but you can bet your bottom dollar that that is going to, at least in some spots, spike rainfall across parts of Queensland. And look at our long-range monthly weather forecast right now. This is from the CFS monthly model here over on Tropical Tidbits, those green areas indicating above average rainfall accumulations each month, and those orange areas indicating below average rainfall accumulations each month. And you can see for the month of December, whilst it is a relatively average pick across, uh, picture across the eastern states, some areas of marginally below, other areas of marginally above. For the most part, we haven't seen those full-blown La Nina conditions kick in wet. So uh, yet, so when does La Nina kick in? Well, it's with the monsoon. And that monsoon is just a few weeks away right now, but we typically see the monsoon arrive through the middle parts of December. So whilst it's expected to remain dry over the next two weeks, keep in mind I'm recording this on the 1st of December, we are expecting the next two weeks, particularly for Queensland, to be relatively calm and storm-free. We will be looking at a swing once that monsoon arrives to more rainfall, enhanced rainfall through the Coral Sea, and that will translate to more rainfall across northern Queensland as well. And you can see as we push this forward out towards January, it is a much wetter picture indeed. Have a look at this. Massive rainfall accumulations are expected through the month of January into the Coral Sea. And considering the fact that this is the first model run here from the CFS monthly that takes into account the developing La Nina, this is extremely accurate bullseye accurate, I would say. So this indicates to me that more tropical low activity, more rainfall activity, and more convergent zone activity is what we can expect in the tropical parts of the Coral Sea and adjacent to the north and far north Queensland coastlines. The fact that we've got above average rainfall accumulations in swathes as well through parts of the West Australian waters and even in pockets of the Northern Territory waters here through the Arafura Sea also indicates to me that there is going to be an abundance of tropical low and potentially tropical cyclone activity as well. We highlighted a couple of months ago that there is the chance of tropical cyclone activity through the Queensland coastline in the month of January and February. Well, there always is on every given year, but we've got an increased chance in 2026, January and February, and that is going to be no different. And the fact that the forecast is now suggesting massive rainfall accumulations through January and February goes to show that that tropical cyclone prediction of above average activity through this part of the Coral Sea is now beginning to come true. It's now really beginning to shape up. In terms of the Southeast Queensland tropical cyclone threat, I know Cyclone Alfred has left a very sour taste in Southeast Queensland's mouth, uh, considering its impact in March of this year. It's impossible to predict that accurately. There is, in any given year, a chance of a tropical cyclone or tropical low making it down in towards Southeast Queensland, but in every given year, it's a very, very minimal chance. This year is no different. We've still got that chance, and it might be a little bit higher than what it normally is in a normal year, but considering the fact that those events are one in 50, one in every 100 years, it is exceedingly unlikely that 2026 is is going to see a tropical low or tropical cyclone move down through Brisbane or the Gold Coast. It's still possible though, and anything can happen. As we keep pushing this forecast forward, you can see February remaining very wet as well. In fact, rainfall it picks up for a few locations, particularly along the Capricornia coastline, and that was a place we highlighted back in August for significant rainfall in the early months of 2026. So again, good to see that that prediction is beginning to come true as well. And as we get out towards March and April as well, you can see enhanced rainfall does continue, but it does begin to back off a little bit, and that is because we are expecting a return to neutral conditions, La Nina is going to fade away and weaken through February and then March and April as we enter in those neutral conditions. Whilst the La Nina effects will linger, those sea temperature anomalies are not going to be as warm in the tropical Pacific Ocean adjacent to the Queensland coastline and rainfall will taper off a little bit and come back down to normal. Keep in mind, we are still expecting above average uh, sea temperatures into the Coral Sea throughout the remainder of this upcoming wet season that is about to get itself going. So above average rainfall is naturally expected right through the remainder of the wet season, but it's going to be very wet to start off and then 
as we get out towards March and April, things should taper off to normal. So if this is our baseline here, we are expecting rainfall to start up here and then begin to return as we get out towards February and March. And then at the end of this graph here, April, rainfall should begin to taper off to average for the majority of locations. Of course, we will have drier and wetter areas right through the entire course of this forecast modeling. And then you can see as we get out towards May, as the wet season begins to weaken off, June, July, and August, as we get towards our winter months, we are now expecting an El Nino to begin to build as we get out towards August, and that will keep things a lot cooler into the Pacific Ocean and the Coral Sea. And you can see rainfall anomalies do take a tumble uh, towards the lesser side as we get out towards the later parts of 2026. Now, that El Nino is not locked in yet, but there's been a lot of talk about it, and I see no reason why an El Nino is not going to develop around August or September 2026. And it would make sense, considering we've been in that La Nina period for the last two years now, very rarely does a La Nina last more than two years, we will normally see a swing back towards at least neutral, warm neutral, and potentially back towards El Nino as well. And we're already beginning to see the impacts of this La Nina onto our long range forecast modeling. As mentioned, the monsoon is not forecast to arrive until at least mid-December at this point in time. But this picture here at mid-December has a lot of tropical activity onto the forecast. And you can see compared to the picture right now on the 1st of December, where the majority of this rainfall and shower activity is across Indonesia, as opposed to the northern parts of Australia, as we get out towards the 15th of December and we see that monsoon begin to break across northern Australia, you can see that rainfall line really does drop a little bit further south and that should bring it over the top end of the Northern Territory, parts of Queensland, and that could also translate into developing tropical low or tropical cyclone threats on either side of the nation. Now the Coral Sea is expected to get going earlier than usual and the tropical cyclone activity is expected to be more abundant than usual and also stronger than usual. Again, with those sea temperatures that are absolutely sky high right now, real sea temperature values, keep in mind we need 26 degrees to support tropical cyclone activity and normally at this time of the year we're beginning to see them crack into the 26 degree mark through the coral sea but you can see here 29 30 degrees in spots getting closer to 31 degrees as we push things over and towards the solomon sea here away from the queensland coastline it is piping hot and these are sea temperatures we would normally be seeing in february or march not in late november and into early december i mean this is late november snapshot here on wind.com so a very concerning picture now beginning to be painted with that 26 degree isotherm keep in mind north of here is where tropical cyclone activity can be supported, extending as far south as the Fraser Coast and even parts of the Sunshine Coast at this point in time. So again, a very, very concerning picture is being painted for the Coral Sea. And what this means is whatever tropical low or tropical cyclone activity can get going into the Coral Sea, whilst any one storm is not necessarily guaranteed, but if one storm does get going and it does move towards the Queensland coastline, more uh, more moisture in the atmosphere and warmer sea temperatures means it's going to pick up more moisture and it's going to come ashore in towards Queensland as a wetter system at nine times out of ten. Now, I would just like to wrap this video up by saying that this is not for every place in Australia. There are going to be places, even with a La Nina, as we look down one of the worst flooding seasons, once again on record this millennium, uh, for the eastern states of Australia, for Queensland especially, it's going to be one of the worst flooding years in living memory for many people. It doesn't guarantee a massive flood for any one location. There are still going to be places, even in the wettest uh, of rainfall predictions, uh, like North Queensland or along Southeast Queensland, that are still drier than average and see less storms than average and see less tropical low or tropical cyclone activity compared to the long-term average. This is just a general picture. And as with all long-range weather forecasting, it is very much a general and a broad picture. For the most part, I'm expecting rainfall around Australia to be in that 60th to 70th percentile throughout the, uh, or the, throughout our northern parts, including Queensland, the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia. Throughout our summer months, there will be places that dip as low as the 30th percentile, and then there'll be places up in the 95th or 96th percentile, for example. We've already seen some of our wettest rainfall on record for respective months already in September through Northern Queensland, 350 millimetres at Tongue Oil Alert overnight, and they've got a similar setup coming mid this week. We've had some incredible thunderstorm activity through southeast Queensland, including 14 centimetre record breaking hailstones into the Brisbane City area, not just southeast Queensland, Brisbane City. So, this storm season has already started off much wilder than expected, and it's expected to continue in that wild fashion as we head out through the remainder of our storm season months. It's a favourable picture for rainfall, it's a favourable picture for tropical low and tropical cyclone activity. So buckle up. This is a concerning forecast, but not one to be making panicking uh, or, prepara uh, or prep preparations for at this point in time. Just make sure you keep it in the back of your head that rainfall is on its way. And when it arrives, it is going to be significantly wetter than usual through much of Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia. I'm going to have more details on this La Nina over on, over on the Facebook page. So go and check me out over there, link in the description. And also consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you have enjoyed this video or 
found it informative. These do take a little bit of research to make, so all the support is massively appreciated. I hope you like the new angle as well. I'm planning on putting a few things behind me as well. Just completed the office setup, I guess you could call it right now. It's a good little setup, that's for sure. I'm looking forward to making more videos than this. So good things are coming. Make sure you are subscribed, and that's going to be all for me today. A massive thank you to the channel sponsors. The list keeps growing and growing and growing, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.